This next spring garden will be my fifth consecutive year growing a garden, so everything in this video took me four years to learn, but I'll teach you everything you need to know about gardening in just six minutes. Let's begin. If you ever watch people that professionally garden or just like garden tours in general, you've likely heard the terms like, oh, I'm in growing zone 6A, 7B is probably the most common one you'll hear. 7B and 7A are where I'd say just about 60% of the people that do garden tours are from. Now, a growing zone determines what type of plants can be grown in the area. Typically, a growing zone below 8B is typically something that's a little bit chillier. Anything really below 5A is where you can't grow too much. So, like, if you're, like, really far up north, you're starting to get into, like, lower growing zones. I'm personally in 6A, which is, like, right in the middle of all these growing zones and stuff like that. Now, this is a tip that might seem daunting at first, but as long as you paid attention in your high school science class, you know exactly what you're about to be in for. The pH level on your soil matters a whole lot when it comes down to gardening. Typically, you want to keep the pH level between 6 and 7. Typically, I personally have found around 6.2 to 6.6 .6 works the best, although 6.8 can also help with a lot of other things in lower pH levels for things like blueberries. I personally find that around 6 or 5.9 may work for blueberries, typically at least. Now, if you look at the back of your seed packets, it's more likely than not that you know that there's a little bit of information on the back of your seed packets. Now, this information can be really, really valuable at times. Typically, it consists of where you should best plant this, if it's pot or container friendly or not, and it, what time it'll like likely start producing a harvest after, how long it takes for germination, and a general description of the plant. I'd recommend reading over the basics of the plant as it'll help you a lot. Typically, the fastest blooming ones I find personally are the cucumbers, which I can't remember exactly what they were on the video, but I remember it being something like 55 or 56 or something along those lines in my planting video. Marsh are see some germinations personally in my fall garden. Be sure to comment how your fall garden is doing down below if you're even growing one. Now over the course of many years, I want you to begin expanding your garden. Maybe on the first year, you will start off with like maybe three of each type of plant you want to grow in the future, and maybe not even all of them to begin with. Your second year, you will likely start expanding and experimenting with other types of plants that you could possibly grow in your small space, or possibly even large space. By the time you reach your third year, you'll likely now expand it a whole lot since the first year, and by the time you reach your fourth year, you'll likely start experiencing huge garden issues and also overcoming them a lot easier with a lot bigger of a space for your garden. By the fifth year, you could be experiencing a humongous garden. Trust me, this is something that happens over the course of many years. Next year's garden, I really hope it's the best one that we could possibly do, as we're planning on moving the corn and pumpkin patch closer to home, which should allow for much better germination. Always make sure you're improving. I'll go over that tip in just a minute. I just figured I'd say, always make sure you know what you're doing with all this type of stuff and expanding the garden over time because my first year of gardening I had that entire garden with corn eggplants peppers tomatoes and all that whatnot and now that's just the strawberry patch now this is one I hear a lot of people say but I just figured I'd bring this up again because hard work will always pay off in many different scenarios especially in gardening scenarios especially if you're constantly trying to tend to your garden but nothing seems to be going your way like you could have just planted a whole lot of like peppers or lettuce I've never had any germination with lettuce or uh, not cucumbers carrots very similar words I jumbled up there either way you might not have any success with that. Eventually though, you probably will. Change up your gardening style a little bit. Maybe shift around some things. Maybe check the soil, as I said earlier in this video. That's why checking the soil, checking the growing zone, checking the environment, checking the weather, which I'll go over in the next tip, is always key in these sort of scenarios. This could help you save your entire garden and always make sure to pay attention because 
paying attention to your garden at all times will help it and will make sure that you'll have the most trustworthy garden that you could have possibly ever made, especially if you're in an area that has very, very varying weather. Now I am 91.246% sure I spelled wary wrong, but I don't really care, so that way you don't have to point that out in the comments below. But always check the weather. If you don't know, uh, if you haven't seen my community post recently, we're actually supposed to be getting our first snow here. They're talking about anywhere from a coating to two inches of snow. I'm not buying into that though. Which basically means that yeah, we could be seeing accumulating snow over the course of the next couple days. So that's why you need to check the weather. If my garden was still out there, oh, it would be dead. I need to get the pet birds back inside. I want to go cover up the strawberries and blueberries soon. This will help us determine how long it'll take for this sort of stuff to happen. And then same with other things as well. Now I have nine seconds left, so click the video on the screen right now. So that way, um, yeah, I can reach 4,000 hours anyways. I am out of here. Subscribe. I'm sorry I wasn't able to present everything.